history will be made tomorrow as Donald Trump becomes the first former American president to face criminal charges. And it may not be the only criminal trial he faces this year, all while asking the American people for their vote. Joining me to talk about the political ramifications of what's happening in the courts is the tech executive, Democratic megadonor and founder of Investing in Us, Dimitri Melhorn. Dimitri, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me and thank you for your show. Thank you. We like to have a little bit of fun here, but you have done something interesting and I think perhaps a little bit new. Part of what you do with your donations with political intent is actually aimed at the courts. Why? Because the courts are where America goes when we want to find out what's true. Take it to the judge. Tell it to the judge. Take it to the courts. The Law and Order SVU. Marbury versus Madison. We're a country that when we're unsure, we look to the courts. And uh, it is important for the courts to determine whether uh, uh, whether Trump is a criminal. Uh, that's an important thing for us to know as a country. Can you talk a little bit about some of the work you've done in Trump-related cases, talking about E. Jean Carroll? E. Jean Carroll is a great example. So E. Jean is not someone whose case against Trump uh, was, they wouldn't have taken it on contingency. Because contingency lawyers would have said, there's no way you can win. He'll just settle. Of course, in, in point of fact, he didn't. But uh, E. Jean would not have been able to bring this case without third party financial support. And uh, we've never met her. I've never met her. Uh, we have provided some third party support for public interest lawsuits in general, not just against Trump, but against anyone associated with his movement, including, for example, we uh, we helped pay for some of the fees of plaintiffs who were injured in Charlottesville in 2017 in the Unite the Right rally. And so similarly, when Jean Carroll came along, she could not have gotten justice, uh, could not have had her day in court without someone to pay the legal bills. And so uh, through a C3 uh, public service uh, third party payer entity, uh, she became part of a group that uh, received some of that funding. I think it was C3. It might have been C4. Either way, we become the third party payers and they get to have their day in court. And in this case, the courts found that uh, Mr. Trump had actually uh, a unanimous jury that I think included several strong Trump voters and supporters. A unanimous jury found that he had sexually assaulted her. And the judge confirmed that uh, this meets the colloquial definition of rape. So now when voters are starting to pay attention in September and October, uh, they will have something that they didn't have in 2020 or 2016, which is a unanimous jury finding that he engaged in this violence against women. And that's an important thing for people to know when they're trying to decide whether to make him president. I certainly don't know Robbie Kaplan's billable hour rate, but I suspect it's pretty high up there. But let me ask you about the difference between the E. Jean Carroll trial and what we also saw Trump go through this year, which was the civil fraud trial. One is a bench trial. One is a jury trial. And so it makes sense that putting money towards this third party funding and jury trials uh, might make a difference and there might be more room for that. But what do you think about when it's a bench trial or perhaps more broadly thinking about how the country is starting to talk about judges? Is being more political. Do you think that that is going to continue to be the case that people go to the American courts for what's true, given the nature of the conversation about judges? So it's exactly the right question. Both of those are good questions. Uh, in terms of whether our courts will be seen in a more partisan, less legitimate way, it sort of depends. Um, right now, one of the two major political candidates for president uh, has made his campaign about delegitimizing the American courts as political. And if that campaign is successful, then yes, that is what happened. American courts will be delegitimized when we become purely political, especially because Mr. Trump himself has said that he's going to use the Department of Justice and the Internal Revenue Service to go back, go after his political adversaries. And uh, the courts and the Heritage Foundation have said they're going to support him in that. So it is definitely the case that the courts are about to become a lot more political if, uh, you know, depending on how this happens, if, if it turns out to be an effective tactic to attack the, the courts. I will say, however, that some of these bench trials, some of these jury trials, whichever it is, they are all judicial findings. When a court says that Donald Trump's business was guilty of tax fraud, that is a judicial finding. Uh, his business was guilty of uh, financial fraud to the banks, that he was guilty of defaming and raping a woman, uh, that he was li or liable anyway. Uh, the uh, uh, Colorado Supreme Court used the January 6th evidence to have a judicial finding that Trump 
engaged in insurrection. And even though the Supreme Court did not agree with the procedural implication of removing him from the courts, they declined to reject that factual finding. So there's just an increasing weight of factual findings from juries, civil, criminal, private, formal, federal, state, where people are just like, oh, right, this guy's a criminal. And the evidence is stacking up that he's a criminal. And that will affect how people vote. Maybe not everybody, maybe not enough to change the election, but it will affect how people vote. Well, as we continue to have a number of Trump-related trials this year, we'll have to have you back to join us to talk about those ramifications, especially as we get closer to November. I'm curious to see if we actually have a second criminal trial. We'll see. Dimitri Melhorn, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for everything you do.